Hello everyone, this is lesson two. We're going to look at transnational corporations. Now the readings for this week is from Cohen and Kennedy's book, Global Sociology. Here we're going to look at transnational corporations with a very val uh, balanced view. We're going to first look at some of its positive contributions to the world and then look at some of the, the, the failings or problems associated with transnational corporations. Let's look at the topics that we're going to cover uh, this week. Now, in the last uh, session, we looked at the big picture of globalization. How has the world around us changed in very fundamental ways since about the late 1980s to 1990s? And what has, have we changed as people surrounded by these dramatic changes around the world? Now we're going to move on to the other part of this cl uh, class, uh, transnational corporations. What are the origins and characteristics of transnational corporations? Now, living in this day and age, you may think that transnational corporations have been part of our lives all, all the time, but that's really not the case. We're going to try to understand uh, from what context these transnational corporations were born, what are some of the key characteristics that scholars think are important characteristics of these transnational corporations so that we can see whether a country's a company or group of companies are transnational corporations or not. So we're going to cover those topics. And then when we think about transnational corporations, we often think of TNCs from the United States, Japan, Europe, and so on. The company names that come to you, I wonder what they are. They may be companies like Microsoft, Samsung, Toyota, and these are major conglomerates mostly uh, coming from advanced industrialized nations. We want to see if developing countries also have produced some of these transnational corporations. So we're going to cover the topic of TNCs from developing countries. Are we going to see any uh, transnational corporations from the developing part of the world? Is this a possibility? What are some of the, the, the front runners uh, from the developing countries? Let's look at the, the concepts uh, that we're discussing this week one more time. Uh, first, we're going to look at the transnational corporations, and then we're going to visit the topic of nation state versus transnational corporations. I wonder if you remember from my first lesson about globalization and about uh, transnational corporations. When I, I talked about the fact that some major transnational corporations are in fact much larger than smaller uh, developing countries. There are many, many countries in the world whose uh, GDP is smaller than a major business um, uh, corporation's annual assets. So we're trying to understand uh, what is the power of these transnational corporations vis-a-vis -a, -vis a nation state in making important decisions. Let's say, for example, um, Microsoft wants to come to your very poor country. Does your country, does your government have any say in this bargaining? Is there any possibility for your local corporations to come in into the bargaining table in, in discussions with Microsoft? If GE wants to come to your country, do you have an open uh, 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 forum in which you can equally discuss some key issues? So these are some uh, challenges that uh, the countries, in particular developing countries, face when they're dealing with transnational corporations. Now that's the topic that we're going to cover in nation state uh, versus transnational corporations. In, in uh, our discussion about transnational corporations, I said that many are coming from advanced industrialized nations, but that there are few that are also coming from developing countries. So we will be visiting concepts like advanced industrialized nations, what that means, and also what we mean by developing countries. This concludes today's uh, lesson, and I, I look forward to seeing you next week.